Hello, everyone. Hope you can see us fine and hear us fine. Uh, my mic might be a little bit off, but anything that I say today is not meant to diagnose or um, bypass your medical doctor's recommendation. Check with your doctor before taking any advice. And that's all I'm going to say. All right, let's get started. We have quite a few questions lined up in the green room as well as social media. And uh, Steve, yep. I'll take up. Uh, over to you. Great. So uh, full house indeed. And by the way, audience, my voice for some reason seems to be breaking up and that seems to delight everyone in the green room because I usually talk so much. So they're glad that I'm having some technical issues, but bear with that. And speaking of the green room, uh, Muhammad, our first uh, participant, is uh, kind of on a schedule. So we're going to let him come in first. Muhammad, you're on the air with Dr. Berg. Oh, I think Muhammad is frozen. Let's give him a moment. And then how about Lynn? Let's put her on the spot. And Lynn is coming from lovely Austin, Texas. And Lynn, you're on with Dr. Bird. Uh, unmute yourself, dear. No, we don't have you yet. Again, all right. I tell you what, let's just... Uh, roll on right now for a moment with Elizabeth and Elizabeth is coming from Iowa and Elizabeth if you'd unmute yourself can you hear me oh yeah we sure can all right and folks so the rest of you just kind of fiddle with your stuff and we'll get you on but uh, anyway go ahead with Dr. Berg Elizabeth hi Dr. Berg uh, I really <laughs> love your program it's uh, really done wonders for a lot of things um, I do have a a question or two. The one question that's really been bothering me is that uh, you recommend taking some pills right before bed. The um, uh, oh shoot, the yeast, and I have your pro your yeast pro uh, product, and uh, I have a terrible time sleeping, so I follow that. But the problem is, is that I also have a terrible time s swallowing, and um, so when I uh, take those pills and they get stuck, then I feel like I need to eat something to push the pills down. Sometimes I can get it to go down, but a lot of times I can't. What can I eat or do uh, so that I don't break my fast? Because by that time, I'm almost 12 hours into my fast. Well, I, I think the best thing is to chew them. Oh. Um, those are quite large pills to swallow. I, Yeah, you want to chew those. Uh, that's one thing that I do. Um, yes, do get stuck in your teeth. <laughs> uh, the other thing, which, uh, you know, um, I'm coming up with, which uh, could be helpful is, uh, nutritional yeast in a flakes. And you can put those on your, your salad at dinner. And, uh, you know, it, it doesn't have to, the B vitamins or, or nutritional yeast doesn't have to have be, be occurring right before bed. It can happen like any time during the day. But, um, so that's one thing you can do. But yeah, I chew them because they, they are large pills. I would I would definitely tell you, yes, they would. They're huge. Okay. I have one more question, if I could, really quick. You had said in one of your videos to take glandular extracts for particular autoimmune disorders like thyroid and that kind of thing. I have an autoimmune disorder that causes blood clots. It's called antiphospholipid antibodies. And I went online to try and figure out which glandular extract I should try to take, be finding out where the source of the blood clots are created, and I was lost. Do you have any suggestions? You know, you can have an autoimmune disease to pretty much any little even piece of your body, and that is the problem. So, um, so you have this autoimmune that's against a very specific... Uh, chemical right i mean what what is the you have antibodies against what specific tissue you know it's it's the protein in the blood cell yeah okay so yeah uh, it, when i looked it up it talked about oh, sorry it talked about br uh, bone marrow yeah yeah that that might be an idea so uh then the, the product for that would be um um, it's called osteotrophin PMG. Um, that's the one I would recommend because that would, that would probably be the best bet. Cause that's where your blood cells are created. Um, 
So osteotrophin PMG, that's the standard process um, product. And, you know, for those of you that are not even understanding what we're talking about, there's some videos that you can search under Dr. Berg and autoimmune. And it's just another strategy to help um, act as a decoy because when you take an extract of the thing that you're, you have antibodies against and you take it through your stomach, it doesn't go right. It's not like you're injecting it in the blood. It's going through the stomach, the normal um, immigration steps. And then what happens is the antibodies will go from attacking certain tissues to the stomach, uh, giving your body a chance to heal and reju rejuvenate and not attack so much. So that way you have a chance to heal. And I just recommend taking one of these before bed, depending on what specific antibodies you your body is attacking. So anyway, you can watch those videos, but I would take the osteotrophin PMG from Standard Process. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Great, thanks so much, Elizabeth. And Dr. Berg, why don't we kick off with our first quiz question of the day, and here you go. All right, so let's see here, if I can see this, because I have all these lights going on here. Um, all right, we know the triggers for hiccups, okay, like stress and things like that. But what's the deeper underlying root cause to hiccups? All right, dig into that audience. And then uh, we have got Muhammad back. Uh, so we're going to try him again. He's kind of on a schedule. And Muhammad, let's try it. You're on with Dr. Berg. Hey, Dr. Berg, thanks for having me. Uh, sure. So just to let you know, I'm a software engineer, but I have degrees in acupuncture, functional medicine, and a cupping therapy to treat my friends and families, you know. I have just like three issues I need your feedback to treat my patients, you know. According to uh, functional medicine, uh, the major issues start with a leaky gut and SIBO. They're saying all the issues happen later on when we have the first thing happen in your body, you know. So Dr. Berg, uh, when I treat the SIBOs, in certain cases I saw that people even don't have symptoms, but when we do the test, the breath test for the SIBO, they're positive. And even we clear everything up, you know, and SIBO come back after that, you know, without any symptoms, you know. So basically we have no symptoms, clear everything out, but we send a test, you know, for SIBO and they have certain, certain level of SIBO there. So according to my knowledge, it looks like everybody have SIBO in this world, you know, but it's a level of, uh, SIBO have a certain levels under, under, under different peoples, you know. So people have no symptoms, but they have SIBO there for the positive test, you know. Or maybe we don't have to care about until the symptoms shows up you know, for the SIBO. So, so he's talking about small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, and that's a problem where uh, the microbes are in the small intestine when they should be in the large intestine. And you don't want those little guys in your small intestine because they're going to steal all your nutrition. And uh, the symptoms are bloating, especially if you have fiber and, uh, and probiotics and all sorts of other symptoms. So, um, you know, I think everyone has a very, very tiny bit of bacteria in their small intestine, and that's probably what you're picking up. And if they don't have symptoms, I wouldn't even worry about it. Um, but the other point I want to bring up is that there is definitely this idea that all causes for all problems stem from the gut. Um, I don't buy that because there's, there's many different causes. There's some common ones, but you can't tell someone that all of someone's illness comes from the gut because um, there's, let's say, let's say you had a major loss of a loved one that shocked the system. It's nothing to do with food but it can definitely shut down your immune system where your immune system can be suppressed and you can pull in a virus and get an autoimmune disease that way. Let's say you had some vaccine with some mercury or chemical that caused a, you know, autism. It didn't have anything to do with your gut. So the point is that there are other causes. Um, and I would just, I would look at the whole picture and, um, you know, try to, um, pull a string. Today I'm going to do a video on a really good way to evaluate someone and I'll release that next week. Um, I think you should watch that because in practice, you know, 
after working with 40,000 people, you, you get good at figuring things out. And I think you can use some of these, these tools, especially with your background and being an engineer, because you're definitely, you think very logically and, uh, um, but you really have to have, uh, you have to have an open mind to see, and not have any fixed ideas when you're evaluating someone, because I've seen <laughs> so many things that are, are not even related actually the root cause and you have to be able to think very laterally and outside the box. Okay, thanks. One last question I have. Uh, basically, I saw your videos that everybody need certain type of nutrients, you know, many nutrients, you know, for the body to work and not all of them get all these type of foods to get these nutrients on a daily basis, you know. And basically, especially if I talked about in Pakistan, they, don't, they cannot even think about to afford this keto diet, you know, because their food start with the uh, wheat flour, bread, and rice is a main part of the food, you know. <laughs> Basically, they cannot afford these type of meat pieces and all these salads and all these things. There's any uh, herb multivitamins in the market that they can get this nutrition from these tablets, you know, because just like Centrum have 40 multivitamins in there and everything is there, you can do it, you know. So, how can I treat them about in this situation just like this, you know, when you have to have all these nutrients? Welcome to my world. <clears throat> Trying to help people that really need help, but they're not maybe willing to change. So I made it a policy that I only help people that really want help. And let's say someone is in, in India and they have uh, arthritis and they have diabetes and they are overweight. Um, obviously, um, are, are they are they at the level of being willing to be helped and they, uh, they're, they're willing to do whatever you would take. So I always ask the question um, on a scale from one to 10, 10 being very willing, zero being not willing, where are you on changing your ways? And if they're not a 10, uh, I'd say, well, come back when you're a 10, because I, um, there's enough people that are willing to change that want help that I'll work with, but all these other people that are not willing to change your diet, I, I'm like, okay, do do what you want to do. Um, um, I'll, I'll see you in a couple of years after you have more problems. But I will say that I always include intermittent fasting with keto. So that way, oh, I can't afford it. Well, really? Well, guess what? By doing intermittent fasting, you're not eating three meals a day with snacks. So I basically saved you $300 at least, three to $500 a month just on not eating so much. So you can take that money and increase the quality of food. Um, the problem is all those foods that are so traditional are sucking out nutrients and then they go to GNC and they, or some, some store to buy the vitamins. It's all synthetic and they think they're getting the real thing. So, you know, it's, it's, you're, you're dealing with low awareness. And um, I was there. People just don't know. So your job is going to be to educate people increase the awareness that's really um what you're up against um and a lot of false false ideas and a lot of fixed ideas so welcome to my world well muhammad thanks so much for coming on with us and all the okay, best thanks. To, thanks, to you folks and uh by the way maybe this is time doc for you to brag about the availability of products internationally perhaps in pakistan i don't know but um but here they are can well, you see that we're not, we're not quite in um Pakistan or even India quite yet, but we're, we're working on that now. But most of the other parts of the world, if you just, there should be a link down below that you can get products now without having to ship them from America. So if, whether it's Russia, um, the, the, let's see where else, uh, in um, all the different um, Middle Eastern countries, where else? I think uh, Arabic cultures. So there's a lot of different um, areas of the world that we are now in UK that you can find the link down below if you if you wanted to get some products. That's right. So United Kingdom, Singapore, United Arab Emirates, Russia, and Europe. So that's a pretty uh, big number, and they are growing all the time. Dr. Berg, uh, the audience has spoken, and our first question for the day is, we know the triggers for hiccups, but what is the deeper underlying cause? And now we've included those folks in the green room are actually answering, and Elizabeth, who's already been with us, with us said that hiccups <coughs> are a result of gastrointestinal issues. 
And let's see what the audience at large said. 30% say gallbladder issues are hiccup trigger. 25% say alcohol abuse. 25% say digestive issues. And 20% say it's high blood sugar. Wow, all over the map. So this will be interesting to you. Um, I'm going to be releasing the video. Actually, I'm not going to be releasing it today. I'll release it probably in two days. But uh, I'm going to be doing this video that I did some a really good deep dive into hiccups. And, uh, you know, there. it took me a while to find this research. And, uh, and I saw it. I was like, wow, this makes total sense. Um, because, you know, when you look at things, it just tells you, well, just breathe in a paper bag. But they don't tell you why. So it's really important to also tell people the why, which is the understanding of, um, you know, what's what's going on in the body that's creating this. So that way, um, you're just not relying on remedies. And the problem in medicine is like, oh, yeah, you have this symptom, you just take this pill. But there's no education of why. Um, so I will do that video. But, but the answer to the question is it's, it's too much oxygen, not enough CO2. Now, you're probably going, what? How can that be? Too much oxygen. Well, think about what triggers a hiccup. You know, you're laughing excessively. You have this um, stress, stress and you're breathing too much or something. Um, or you might be, you know, getting really excited about something. And you get too much oxygen. Too much oxygen um, in relationship to CO2 causes you, causes the cells the red blood cells, not to be able to release that oxygen. It needs CO2, believe it or not. And that's interesting. And I've done two videos on this. One is on asthma and one is on panic attacks. And uh, so this is why breathing in a bag is one technique you can do. Why? Because you're going to get more CO2 breathing in a bag or slowing your breath down or drinking upside down with a glass of water. You're controlling your breath you're slowing down the oxygen. So anyway, it's very interesting. And if you really understand the full thing and you get a hiccup, you know, you, you know exactly what to do. So expect that video in two days. But it took me a while to figure this out because uh, you, you can't find this data. You have to really dig deep and I will share how I found it. And it makes total sense. Wow, that's amazing, Dr. Burke. And finally, after uh, my entire life of wondering about this, the one remedy that works for me is holding my breath. And I will hold it yeah, until... And why, one, and, why, and why would that work? Because you're increasing CO2, it, not oxygen. It makes sense. And so, I'll hold it yeah, through one or two hiccups, and then suddenly it goes silent, and I'm almost suffocated, and they're gone. Right. Fascinating. That's, that's fascinating. Well, listen, we've been neglecting poor social media, so why don't we start off by at least acknowledging where they're all from? And uh, and we got some new new players, it seems like. So the UK, Canada, Lithuania, Bahrain, Australia, Denmark, Lebanon, Malta, Saudi Arabia, Nigeria, Lebanon. Did we already say that? I think we did. Terry, Philippines, uh, Suriname, Uganda, Zambia, Ro Romania, India, Jordan, Germany, Pakistan, United Arab Emirates, Finland, Norway, Spain. Uh, let's see, it's trying to jump up on me. Um, wow, Iran, Switzerland, Mexico, Chile, Kuwait, uh, Algeria, South Africa, Morocco, Malaysia, Russia, Japan, Taiwan, Costa Rica, nice place, Bangladesh, Bulgaria, New Zealand, and all across these United States. So thanks, everyone, for joining the show. And uh, as a reward for that, we're going to go to social media and ask some of their questions. So Derek from Facebook says, avoid fortified nutritional yeast because it has synthetic ingredients. Is that true? Yeah. Oh, yeah. The way they make fortified is they put synthetic, they feed these yeast synthetic, petroleum-based usually, um, vitamins. So when you get nutritional yeast, you want to get it unfortified. Um, now, some of you are probably already already buying my nutritional yeast, and you say, well, yours says um, unfortified, but you do add something in there. So we are correcting that communication because I do add a natural B12, 
but it's not synthetic. So I'm changing my label to say no added synthetic vitamins. So that's kind of what they do. And I, it's totally unnecessary, but a lot of companies do it. And unfortunately, you're getting, you think you're getting this, oh, wow, it's fortified. Well, think, think what they're doing to the, all the grains, grain products and the food supply. They fortify everything with some synthetic vitamins. Why do they fortify it anyway? Well, because it's being, it's void of nutrition. Usually, you know, you have your, you know, donuts. When I, when I eat a donut, Steve, which is, you know, refined, it doesn't have any nutrients. I want to make sure it's fortified with at least a few <laughs> synthetic vitamins. Absolutely. Well, I'll tell you what, I crunched those pills down there. One person said they couldn't swallow well. Um, and I think that might have been Elizabeth, but but I just crunch them up and I absolutely love them. And I uh, don't care what you put in it, they work for me. I'll tell you, fortified or elsewhere. Karen from YouTube, can I take 5,000 milligrams of potassium if I have type two diabetes? Is that a good idea? Well, we, we want to encourage people to uh, also eat food. The electrolyte powder is meant as an enhancement, not a replacement. <laughs> of vegetables and other foods. So um, could you take 5,000? Yeah. Would you have a problem? I don't think so. Uh, the potassium is highly controlled uh, by your kidneys. So if you take too much, you just your body gets rid of it. Unless you have like advanced stage five kidney disease, which in fact, even those people, there's some, there's uh, conflicting information that they might be fine by taking um, high levels of, not high levels, but just potassium in general. But I don't want to get into that topic, but, but yeah, you could, you could do that and your, your kidneys will just get rid of what it doesn't need. Well, that's fantastic. Okay. And I'm interested in this one. Miles from Facebook wants to know, is it okay to drink electrolytes during my fasting period? Well, I encourage it because um, most people are deficient. And if you're going any period of time, without eating and you're deficient, then those nutrients become exaggerated as far as the deficiency. And you can have symptoms. Um, you can feel faint, you can feel weak, you can have the keto flu and the keto rash, etc. All right, well, let's see here. I am sure that uh, YouTube are starting to um, revolt because we haven't asked a question from there. So San Tenu from YouTube, what could be the cause of scalp tingling sensations? Okay, so can you say can you say the last what what sensation? His, uh, his scalp is tingling. The scalp's tingling. Well, I mean, it could be some type of um, um, growth of uh, you know fungus or something like that. Um, so I would I would probably you know, mix some neem oil, N-E-E-M, with some coconut oil and rub that into your scalp. That's a really good um, antimicrobial. It's used also for garden microbes, I mean, uh, garden pests as well. But yeah, neem oil is a really good one with co coconut oil. Rub that in your skin, see if that doesn't help you. Uh, it sounds like it could be some microbial imbalance. Um, that's my guess. Well, we wish you the best of luck on that. Let's keep up with our questions, Dr. Berg. Here's the next one. All right, so which brain chemical turns off stress instantly? Okay, we're talking about cortisol. There's something in your brain that you make that is like a switch for stress. If you have stress, it might be good to understand what that is. So... Go ahead and uh, tell us what you think. Wow, I hope it's a donut. Maybe not. All right. Let's, uh, no, I said it's a chemical. Ah, okay. Well, I'm always reaching. Judy from Facebook, I'm 66 but feel 96. Ouch. I have osteo and rheumatoid arthritis. How can my, how can my boyfriend and I get off sugar? There you go. It's called Rip the Band-Aid. It's called cold turkey. You have to, you can then replace... There's a lot of replacements for sugar. You know, you have stevia, you have monk fruit, you have xylitol. And honestly, it's almost identical. So you need to start eating foods with these alternative sweeteners. And you can make a lot of cool recipes, keto style, desserts. And uh, you'll be shocked 
how close they taste like sugar. Um, but I will say that, um, boy, the side effects from that sugar is just like deadly. So I think it's time to bite the bullet. Wow, that's fantastic. Well, I tell you what, our green rooms uh, is alive. Elise, which we're going to hear from, is already answered. Uh, but I won't say that. But anyway, we're watching you guys in the green room as well. And let's see, why don't we, speak in the green room, we should go back there. Uh, we've got Gabor. I hope I pronounced his name uh, right. And Gabor, unmute yourself. And you are on with Dr. Berg. I think you're still muted, Gabor. Little speaker icon. I tell you what, I want you to work on that a little bit. And we're going to go uh, for a moment to Gigi. Uh, and let's see, I'm going to unmute her. And Gigi, you are now on with Dr. Hi, Berg. Can you, can you hear me? You sure can. Yes, I can hear you. Hi, Dr. Berg. Thank you so much for taking me my call. Um, <clears throat> I've had hereditary cholesterol pretty much, I guess, since I'm 19, since I was ever first tested blood work. Um, no one, my good cholesterol was always very high. <clears throat> I recently have found out that I have not gallstones and the <clears throat> good cholesterol is still very high, but the, um, <clears throat> pardon me, the, the, uh, fatty liver has kicked in now. And so after menopause, um, of course, the weight gain came on and all of that. So <clears throat> I'm working on that. I'm very, uh, I eat everything pretty much organic as I can. Um, I, the supplements I take are very clean. Um, I try herbal teas. I mean, I feel like I'm pulling out all the stops to try to reverse this. Lots of fiber, you know, the ground flax, organic ground flax seeds, inulin fiber, um, eating as healthy as I can. I don't live in a bubble. So, I mean, I will enjoy a glass of wine or, you know, whatnot, but I do, I have been doing uh, intermittent fasting. I try to eat between 11 and seven for right now. And I'm trying, I'm about 80 to 85% on my keto. So I'm not hundred percent on my keto. I will fudge a little there. Um, but I, I still sometimes have the gnawing pain, you know, on the right side. And I've been told, oh, you got to get your gallbladder taken out, which I really don't want to do. So right. I, uh, I do take, um, you know, milk thistle, and I have something that I take that has some ox bile in it. I feel like I'm doing a lot of things right, but I still occasionally will feel this gnawing. And I don't know if I should just go and get it rechecked with an ultrasound to see what's going on. But I know when I do that, they're probably going to say, take your gallbladder out. Right. So I, you know, and sometimes the gnawing goes away and sometimes it doesn't like I can feel a little bit now and it's like, what, what do I do to keep from getting my gallbladder taken out? I'd like to get rid of these gallstones. You know, yeah. I think, I think, I think it would be important to get a, an ultrasound scan just to, just because you want to know how big they are and you want to have that data, not that you're going to do anything about it, but just have the data so you can get the right, I don't know, estimation of effort of what you're going to have to do. Because let's say, for example, there's a lot of them or it's big um, or maybe it's small. Then, you know, you know what? I think maybe you do need to get more clean, like even go 100 percent right now, because um, that insulin that's generated by those little things could be the thing that's stopping them from going all the way. Um, the other thing is that uh, with the the bile salts, um, you have this genetic cholesterol problem. So that means that um, you might have to take more bile salts than the, the next person because you have a lot of extra cholesterol being generated. So um, I think you may benefit from not just bile salts when you eat, but uh, on an empty stomach. Um, and I would probably add in there, a, do the regular bile salts like you know gallbladder formula when you eat, but then when you don't eat, Two different times of the day, I'd probably maybe early morning, maybe late afternoon, take the Tudka, take two of those um, supplements, and maybe some choline too, some extra choline. Um, and that way you have, you keep the bile flowing. So you keep it, so there's not this cholesterol sludge. That's probably what's causing the pain is the sludge in your bile ducts. 
So you need to keep that flowing nice and um, nice and easy because um, you're making more cholesterol. So um, realize too, unfortunately, wine, carbs uh, turn into cholesterol. So it's, it's, you might be at the level where you need to go a little bit more strict for a while, clean out your pipes, <laughs> and then um, see what you can tolerate later. Um, just, but I think I would also want to know what we're dealing with. So get the ultrasound, just see what, see what's going on. Of course, the medical profession's only solution is, well, you have to have surgery. Well, okay, just get a second opinion. And, um, the, the point is that, um, bile salts are a known treatment for stones. So why can't you just go that route, um, for a while? So you can maybe dissolve them. Uh, that's what I would attempt. Um, the other thing I would add to this is that you have primary um, bile and you have secondary bile that's made from your microbes. So it wouldn't hurt to also really start working on your, like a probiotic for your gut. Um, not necessarily to dump extra different types of fiber like inulin, but just get the, you know, bigger salads, but then some, a good probiotic to help fortify that. That will also help increase bile and um, put you in a little bit better shape. Thank you. Um, how much of the Tudka and choline would you recommend? I would, you know, most of it comes to a standard amount. So I would just do two on empty stomach right when you kind of in the early morning and then two in the afternoon between your meals because I don't want you to snack, of course. And then that way you got that going on. And then when you eat, you probably take two gallbladder formula with each meal. And I think that will, um, that be enough. And then as far as the choline goes, um, you know, just use as a directed on whatever the, it says on the, on the label, because sometimes it's more or less, and just add that at your lunch and add that to your dinner because the choline is kind of like a bile and it uh, will help you also break down the fatty liver. And if the cool thing too, is that if you do, um, a standard, clean, healthy keto with intermittent fasting, you can, you can, um, drop, um, at least 50% of the fat on your liver within two weeks. So if you're getting a fatty liver, it just tells me that, you know, your carbs are probably just a little bit too high. Okay. And I have been doing, uh, bought all the stuff for your drink for the, uh, the kale, the kefir and the blueberries, right? Oh, good. Good. That'll be very good. And then do I add just that water to that? No, no unsweetened almond milk, just water, right? Correct. Water. Yep. That's okay. right. Well, I'm excited about that. <laughs> well, that's, yeah, that's thank good. You, thank you very much for taking my call. Yeah. Gigi, why don't you get back in touch with us too, after, uh, you know, some period of time and let's see how you're doing. We're always interested in the aftermath of these things and we wish you well. Thank and you. You bet. And so now uh, let's go to our quiz question. Uh, number two for the day. Which brain chemical turns off stress, which is uh, cortisol, uh, instantly? And uh, our green room has shared the same sentiment as um, our audience. 45% of respondents say dopamine. 35% say serotonin. And 20% say ketones. Okay. So the chemical is GABA. GABA is a, um, it's the most important turnoff switch for cortisol. And see, people think that when they go through chronic stress that it burns out their adrenals. It, it doesn't. It actually burns out GABA. So you don't have the brake pads anymore. So you're all accelerator, no brake pads. So um, I, I, I will be releasing a video probably tomorrow on this topic. You should watch it because it's, there are certain natural things you can take that are real simple that have properties to stimulate GABA. And uh, tomorrow I'll release a video on what drink. It's a, it's a simple tea. It's very inexpensive. You can get it and uh, you drink that and you're going to feel really good. And you're going to, now you'll know why, because it increases GABA and it turns off cortisol. So it's, I'm trying to provide simple things that you can do to, create a huge effect on your body. So stay tuned for that video tomorrow. All right. Well, it gives me no joy to say that the entire audience was wrong, but uh, that's okay. Cause we're going to give them another chat, uh, another test or uh, another chance. Forgive me with this question, doc. 
Okay, so when you are chronically stressed out, okay, does your pH tend to turn more alkaline or more acidic? All right, dig on that, folks, and let's see. What else do we have here? Let's go back to Facebook. Rayette from Facebook, is intermittent fasting okay for someone who has osteoporosis and degenerative disc disease? Especially, 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 you're going to find that those that pain inflammation is going to go down. I would add vitamin D to that mixture. But, yeah, because when you fast, uh, certain genes uh, get expressed that put this inflammation into remission. So for osteoarthritis, it's really, really key. The other thing for osteoarthritis is you have to keep moving. And I would, instead of developing a, a workout routine where you're doing you know, full body exercises. I would focus more on a really good workout that involves stretching exercises with to make you more flexible and make things more symmetrical. That probably would help you with arthritis better than any other type of workout. Well, that's exciting. Okay, let's see. Uh, where are, hey, by the way, Gabor, let's see if we can hear you. Talk to me for a moment. Okay, now, oh, my goodness, now that is here. so exciting. Hang oh, on, we're going to put you on with Dr. Berg. There you go. Perfect. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. And then I can also tell you a success story with the intermittent fasting and the, the keto diet. Like, I've been doing it for seven weeks now, and I lost seven kilos, like 15 pounds. And it's, wow. it's quite good. And what I really like about this, this is this, actually the third plan I'm trying, but far more the, the best because I'm not hungry. I'm not hungry all the day long. And also, I see the science behind. So through your videos, Dr. Berg, and also like I can check, you know, the, the blood sugar, the ketones in the urine, so I can really follow it. Um, the only thing I would ask you to fine tune this one is that I, I realize from time to time that I have really dry mouth and like bad smell like odor but coming from the stomach it's not from the mouth it's something where so maybe it's the uh, connection with acidicity or something like that yes now it sounds to me like you're from is, are you from italy uh, i am now in belgium and i'm hungarian okay okay so um you know, in hun Hungary, they have, they typically eat more fatty foods, which are great. They have different types of foods. They have sausage and they have different meats that are more fatty, which is really, really perfect for keto. Um, but here's the thing. Um, I think that symptom that you're experiencing will go away, but um, realize that you just got rid of a lot of uh, water weight um, when you started this program recently. And so, I would honestly just start not just increasing your fluids, but electrolytes, more electrolytes, so you can handle the dryness in your mouth. Um, so the potassium, the magnesium, um, and more uh, a little bit of more sea salt with at least about two liters of fluid a day. I think that would uh, help your um, dry mouth more than anything. And then just give it more time. Your body will adjust, uh, but you just got rid of a lot of stored glucose, which stores a lot of water, like one molecule of glucose stores three times the water in, in weight. So you're, all that's gone. So your body might be a, feel a little more dehydrated. Mm -hmm. Okay, good, good, good. And um, if I want to start focusing on also getting muscle, because now you know the, the weight is gone, uh, then uh, what would you propose, like uh, use protein or um, or instead of meat, because I'm eating a lot of meat. What, what else? Yeah, I think you. if you're eating a lot of meat, I, I don't think you need to add more protein. You need to add more exercise, full body, because the, um, the growth of the muscle happens from stimulus of the muscle. So you have to stimulate the muscle to fatigue and really activate the muscles to then rebound and become bigger. So... Um, you're going to have to do heavier, heavier weights, less reps, and then full body. That, that's kind of the area that I would recommend. Perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you. You're welcome. 
Hey, good luck with that gig, big and powerful. Uh, previously, our audience uh, experienced total failure. And now uh, we ask them when are chronically stressed, uh, when you are chronically stressed, sorry, does your pH tend to turn more alkaline or more acidic? And let's see, our audience, 88% um, of them said it's not all wrong. I'm sorry. You, you, don't, you would think you'd turn more acid, but you don't. You, you turn more alkaline, and I'm going to tell you why. Um, when you're under stress, think about what pH is. pH is the power of hydrogen, and that's what you're losing. You're losing hydrogen, which basically uh, forms the acids. So um, you lose your acids when you go through stress, and then you become alkaline. Um, excessively and also you lose potassium and the potassium deficiency in a situation where you're too alkaline and so if if you understand that biochemically then you can actually um, you know put the right thing back to help buffer things but in terms of alkalinity what is it it's muscle spasms it's twitching Steve you remember uh, his eye when he was stressed right? oh yes started twitching that's different. what happens when you go through stress. You start getting these twitches and muscle spasms and your breathing starts to become hyperventilated and that just worsens everything. So um, it's like a vinegar would be a good idea. You want to acidify and that way it'll, it'll help you also mobilize calcium in the body a lot better too, because a lot of these minerals don't get absorbed unless you have Pakistan. Uh, Umir uh, wants to know if he can take, all these supplements at the same time in one day, omega-3, vitamin D, zinc, magnesium here. Um, uh, by the way, we apologize to the audience. Apparently our show is sort of buffering a little bit. And, um, you know, that sometimes happens with the vagaries of the internet, but we hope you're getting the gist of all this. Uh, let's see now, where do we want to go to next? Did we, um, oh, here's a great. With the most youthful skin can be found in which country? Wow, that's very interesting. We'll climb on that uh, audience and let's see. Um, got that. Let's try to let's try uh, Lynn again. Lynn, uh, can you talk to me for a second? Let's see if we can hear you. No, we still don't have you. So you uh, fiddle around with that audio a bit. And by the way, we're getting even with our little problems with the feed. I love you, Doctor Berg. We're getting all these positive comments, which come through every week. And, uh, you know, we don't, that's not a question, so we don't talk about it much, but by golly, it's there. We sure are grateful that uh, everyone's having um, such fun. Let me look for another social media question here. LDL have increased while my H HDL has dropped. My glucose is 64. That's good, I guess. I am a 35-year-old male, 6'1", 169 uh, pounds of pure muscle. I added that in. What's his problem? Yeah, I think I would, um, this is, this relates to cholesterol happens with when you start keto, because when you actually cholesterol, and if there's any fatty liver going into this keto, it might kind of back up in the system. It might show up as, um, you know, throwing off your cholesterol values and look at the two different types of LDL. Um, there's two different types, small, dense, uh, large or large buoyant. And uh, chances are you're not going to find the, the bad kind, which is the small dense. You'll find the other kind. Uh, the other thing you could do if you're concerned is um, take some uh, gallbladder formula, which has the bile salts, and that will help to mobilize this uh, cholesterol in a way to have it go through the body a little bit better and speed up the process. All right, very good. And they also wanted, or we wanted to know, the population with the most youthful skin can be found in which country and our audience suggests 69% of them say Japan. That's a, they got a nice skin, don't they? 20% say Italy and 11% say India. Boy, that's a lot of folks. Uh, Doc, what do you say? Well, it's definitely not the U.S., is it? It's uh, Japan. What? You know, it's, uh, it's good manners to have nice skin. It's like it's just been going on for a long time. They have the highest and highest level, highest quality facial products in the world and they also live it's one of the countries that lives the longest and they 
Um, so they, their food is higher quality. They do a lot of seafood with trace minerals and omega-3 fatty acids. Um, tips from these other countries that have uh, really good things going for them. Um, but, and then we can also avoid the things on the other, the countries that have bad things going for them, like America. So if you want to know how to be really healthy, find out what they recommend in the opposite direction. Well, I think that's wise. All right, uh, let's keep ripping through these uh, questions. And the next one is up. Okay, so what's the best solution to counter the damaging effects of artificial light? I'm talking about the fluorescent lighting. I'm talking about the lighting from what you're sitting in front of right now, including this thing right here. Um, so how do you counter that? What's the, what's the best way to counter all that stuff? I mean, you can avoid it. Good luck never using your computer again. What can we do to counter it? I think that would be a good, good beneficial tip for her and gets her to that sort of high blue. So I don't know if that's a, a corrective thing. You're going to find out, Steve. All right, problem. Why don't you speak to us? Let me see if we can hear you. Can you hear me now? Oh, my gosh. That is yes. so exciting. Hold on. You yes. are a TV star now. There's Dr. Bird. Seven and a half weeks, and I still am completely exhausted, and I'm hungry all the time. I'm doing everything I think I should be doing, so I don't know what is missing. Okay. Um, well, there's definitely something missing. Um, what, what did you eat yesterday really quick? Can you tell me? Um, I have coffee in them, like kind of late afternoon because I'm afraid I'll break my fast with it. And I have two tablespoons of it and I make a salad dressing out of, uh, I don't know if I'm eating too much, too little fat. I keep my carbs right. No, the bloating is much better. And I want to eat, but I'm, I'm holding off. I, I wait. Tired, uh, like you more energetic. A little bit, but I still feel pretty weak. Because you gave me this mystery. Um, there's a couple things I would look around a fatigue syndrome. Um, it's a it's an old virus that's get, get that gets reactivated as fatigue, whether it's Epstein Barr virus or whatever. Especially if they're going now, has that improved or worsened? It has improved. I I get a lot of sleep. I do really well. Ah, so then you got on keto, now you're tired. Yes. So I think I would look at, a, a, there's, and I'm just guessing, you know, maybe a SIBO, maybe like I would maybe try.